What's up everyone, Alex here. In this day and age, it's no longer surprising to find RPGs that are 40 plus hours long. But back in the days of the NES and SNES, you'd find RPGs that could be finished within 10 to 20 hours. And with more RPGs telling even longer stories as the years progress, it does beg the question of whether or not this style of gameplay could deliver meaningful experiences while telling shorter tales. As if by chance, looking at the landscape of JRPGs over the past year or so, you can see that developers both big and small are releasing games that attempt to answer this question. So Romantic's Jack Move, a turn-based cyberpunk-themed JRPG that's been almost a decade in the making, is one such game. And after playing it for 10 plus hours and doing as much of the side quests as I possibly could, I can honestly say that the future is bright for shorter, meatier JRPG experiences. Jack Move is available on PC right now and will be releasing on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on September 20th. The footage you're seeing right now is from the PS4 version of the game, and I'd like to take the time to thank Hype Train Digital and So Romantic for providing this review code. In Jack Move, you play the role of Noah Solaris, a renegade hacker who's simply trying to make ends meet, set in an alternate reality cyberpunk future controlled by a corporation called Monomind. Things turn for the worse for our heroine as the corporation abducts her father and leaves a trail of clues that has you uncovering the truth behind the organization's ultimate goals. What makes Jack Move different from other RPGs is that this is a solo act, meaning you won't have a party to rely on at all. This allows you to focus on improving Noah using loadouts that'll take advantage of enemy weaknesses. In fact, I'll even go so far as to say that the choice of software and hardware you equip will determine how successful she'll be when fighting groups of enemies. Let's break this down a little bit here and translate some of these into RPG parlance. During battle, you can hack enemies, which is the equivalent of attack, and also use software, which is the equivalent of magic spells in other RPGs, and equip hardware, which is the equivalent of armor and accessories in other RPGs. Unique to Jack Move is a move called Jack Move, which is basically a special move that you can activate once you fill up your Jack Move meter. This is QTE based, but I found that the game is very forgiving when it comes to these inputs. As said, software allows you to deliver elemental attacks, but here's the catch. You cannot use all of the software you buy from the store. In fact, you will have to equip them in RAM slots, which function similarly to Materia in Final Fantasy VII. You start off with three RAM slots, and that's not enough given that most offensive piece of software require two slots. That being said, you are able to swap out pieces of software during combat, but it does use a turn. One advice the game gives you early on is to use cash during combat, which will allow you to defend for one turn and get two consecutive turns soon after, allowing you to install a new piece of software and use it immediately after. In terms of hardware, you get three hardware slots, with only one unlocked at the beginning. And as with software, you can purchase these expansion ports at the store, but you have to choose which hardware to install wisely. The limitations with software and hardware ensure that Noah isn't overpowered in every situation. And I'll give you this warning right now, because while the first two hours of the game won't challenge you one bit if you're a veteran JRPG player, Bosses and enemies that soon follow will have you thinking of ways to gain advantage during combat. One particular boss battle that I encountered around this time had me buying a piece of software that could undo the effects of a slow status effect inflicted upon me, as I discovered that simply trying to power through it had the boss taking three back-to-back -back turns, taking out more than 50% of Noah's life, for example. It's in these cases that Jack Move shows some of the finest parts of its combat, allowing players to customize Noah in many different ways. And if you're worried about money, the only thing I'll say is that I was overflowing with money after a few hours of play, and buying these software and hardware upgrades are quite simple. You just go to the store and buy them. 
Having many of these options early on really allows you to experiment and play with different loadouts. And while I did lament at one point that I missed having a party due to how sometimes I have the wrong software installed, correcting my loadout made these wants disappear. After all, recognizing what software to install and therefore having the right loadout is part of the challenge. Jackmove does have random encounters, though there is a meter on the top right corner of the screen that lets you know if one might occur soon. You can also control how aggressive these encounters are simply by pulling up a menu, even going so far as to let you control autosaves after each battle. The only thing that I don't like about the combat is one particular battle theme that starts off like an alarm alerting nearby enemies. While I certainly didn't mind it in the beginning, hearing it repeatedly after playing the first couple of hours made me think, wow, I actually really don't like how this sounds. Which is a shame, because the rest of the game's music is fantastic. In particular, the alarm sound takes too much unnecessary time to get to the part of the song where the rest of the instruments kick in. If the alarm music actually played during the transition from exploration to combat, as it's loading the battle UI, it might be okay. That being said, I don't want my comment about the music to get lost in this, as there are some really neat tracks in here. Visually, the game is stunning, with its fantastic animations in and out of combat, and how colorfully varied its color palettes are. Walking around town and even exploring different dungeony maps feel great, and it's eye candy that looks satisfying, with tons of small details here and there. It may be pixel art, but it's a feast for my eyes, and you can tell that a lot of care and effort went into this. This actually has a profound effect on dungeon exploration, as I was always scanning what's on screen to see how I could properly get a chest in one place or even go to the next floor in the next. And seeing all the little details makes these sorts of traversal challenges pleasing, to say the least. With regards to Noah's story, it's an easy to follow tale that's heavily inspired by both cyberpunk themes and, interestingly enough, classic JRPGs. I won't elaborate on the latter, but Jackmove's inspiration seemed to be far-reaching, celebrating the RPGs that its creator enjoyed, blending it with a unique cyberpunk theme that helps it stand out amongst the crowded RPG space. Indeed, its shorter length is more of a boon than a disadvantage, as it's just fun to toy around and mess with different combinations of software and hardware while figuring out the most optimized loadouts to bring for specific boss fights in the game. I will say that if you're looking for some character development melodrama, which is typical of JRPGs, that you won't find any of that here. Which is fine, especially given how Jack Move endeavors to be a fulfilling, shorter JRPG experience rather than a bloated, lengthy adventure. While playing through the game, I could almost feel its developer making meticulous decisions behind key aspects of it, which has ultimately made the experience feel better. Ultimately, Jackmove is an experience that I'm really happy to have played in 2022. With its unique pixel art cyberpunk aesthetic, great soundtrack, not you, and loadout-based gameplay, Noah's tactical espionage hacking adventure gets an easy recommendation for me as a must-play for JRPG fans. It also serves as a perfect break from those lengthy JRPGs that you've been playing recently. But regardless of whether you play it as your main game or a side game, I cannot overstate how much you should play Jackmove. And that, my friends, is my review of Jackmove. I'd love to hear what you think. Post your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about it. And if you like RPGs, Japanese games, indies, niche titles, and more, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.